Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Kevin. Well, we are in the middle of garden season and every year there is one thing that we end up with way too many of and that is cucumbers. So today I'm going to show you three things to do with cucumbers. Two that are some of my favorite things to eat and drink over the summer and then we're also going to talk about how to save seeds from your cucumbers so that you can have a never-ending supply of cucumbers for future gardens. So the very first thing that we're going to get started on today is a drink that I absolutely love and that is cucumber limeade. Sarah's recently been posting on Instagram about the cucumber limeade that I love to drink over the summer and a lot of you have been asking for the recipe and how to make it so I thought I'd show it to you today. In my opinion it's one of the most satisfying drinks that you can have over the summer. It's so good after you've been working outside in the heat to come in and just have it, it's so refreshing. So, it's only going to use three cucumbers for the gallon that we're going to make today, but I think you're going to absolutely love it. We're going to start by just peeling our cucumbers and then we're going to get them into the blender. Alright, we have all of those peeled. Now the peels we'll put in a bowl and Actually, something quite magical is going to happen to these peels. They're going to turn into bacon because we're going to take these outside and we're going to give these to the pigs. And they absolutely love them. So, nothing goes to waste around here. Even the peels uh, eventually will end up in the freezer in the form of some awesome pork. Alright, so we've got all of our cucumbers peeled. We're going to chop them into pieces and then we're going to get them into our Ninja blender. And uh, we're going to start making some cucumber juice. Now I don't worry about cutting these into very small pieces because our blender does a really good job so I just cut them into some chunks and we'll just throw them right in. Along with the cucumbers we're going to fill this up with water and I go all the way up to the maximum mark here for our blender. Uh, I think it ends up being about six or eight cups of water, uh, something like that. But you can play around with the recipe, get it to the strength that you like, but whatever one pitcher on your blender should be about right. Now, in our case, we have awesome well water out here in the Ozarks. We have our water tested periodically, so we know it's good water. And uh, I'll tell you, there's nothing better than good, clean well water. So we're going to fill this up all the way to our full mark. We're going to put this back on and then we are just going to start blending this up. Now we're going to just blend this up until basically there's no cucumber left at all. All right, that is done. Now we need to strain all of the pulp and whatever seeds didn't get ground up and everything so that uh, we can get this into a container. So like I said, this is gonna make a one gallon batch of cucumber limeade. So we're gonna use a gallon jar, a strainer, and we have these big funnels. I'm gonna use those together here and we're just going to pour this through there and we're gonna let it all drain into our gallon jar. Now once this is completely drained, this will be about a half gallon of cucumber juice. So after that, we're going to add the limeade portion of it to it, and then we'll have an awesome drink. Alright, so that has stopped draining. We'll give all of this pulp and everything that's left to the pigs. And now we're going to just fill the rest of this gallon jar up with water. This is kind of a cucumber concentrate juice right now. So we're going to fill this the rest of the way up with water. And then we're going to start adding the lime juice.
All right, so we've got our gallon jar filled up now, and today we're just gonna use store-bought lime juice. If you have fresh limes, go ahead and use fresh limes, because that would be awesome, uh, but we don't have fresh limes this time of year, so we're just gonna use lime juice from the store. So I'm gonna use a third of a cup. Sometimes I end up adding a little more. It depends kind of how strong the, the cucumber flavor is in your drink. So you're just gonna have to kind of learn what you like, but about a third of a cup, maybe a little bit more is about right. Now, we're going to add some type of sweetener. I like to use stevia because Sarah and I try to do a low carb diet. If you don't care about that or you prefer to use sugar instead of stevia, uh, I would use about a half cup of sugar, maybe a little bit more, but because we're using stevia, I like to use about a teaspoon of stevia. So I'm gonna measure that out. It's somewhere, if, you're, if you don't wanna measure it, it's somewhere around 50 drops of stevia if you have the liquid stevia like this. But again, how sweet or tart you want something is really kind of an individual thing. So you're gonna to have to play around with the recipe and really figure out what you like for that. So I'm gonna mix this up. And isn't this an awesome color? I just think that the color of this is really nice but the smell of it I wish you guys could smell because the smell of the cucumber is so strong and that's what I really like about it I'm gonna pour a little bit of this and give it a try and then we'll see if we need to make any adjustments actually I think that's about perfect I guess I've learned over time how to make it pretty good the first time but again it's going to take you a little bit of time to realize exactly how you like it and how you like it. If, if you like your limeade a little more sour or a little more sweet, uh, you're gonna have to make those adjustments yourself. All right, so that is complete. You guys, this is one of my favorite summertime treats. Now, I know a lot of you ask, whenever we do videos, where we get our jars. These gallon jars that we use, mostly we use them when we milk our cow, but uh, these gallon jars come from Azure Standard. Uh, we order them by the case. I think there's four in a case when you order them and uh, they're just a great deal and they come in super handy. So uh, we're gonna put this in the fridge and then we're gonna move on to my next favorite thing that I like to do with cucumbers and that is a great cucumber salad or refrigerator pickle. All right, now that we're done with the cucumber limeade, we're gonna start with the refrigerator pickles. So for this, I'm gonna use three kind of average size cucumbers. Uh, once again, we're going to start by peeling them. We're going to, again, put these in for the pigs so that we can have some good pig food. Now that the cucumbers are uh, peeled, we're going to actually set those off to the side for just a minute, and we're going to make our uh, brine. We're going to start with one cup of white vinegar. You can use other types of vinegar if you want to, but white vinegar, I think, is the best for this type of recipe. We're also going to add one cup of water. If you wanna do a bigger batch, you can definitely scale this up or down. So equal parts of vinegar and water. And then for this, I actually am going to use sugar. We use raw organic sugar, and we're gonna use uh, half a cup for this mixture here. But again, that is to your taste. Along with that, I'm gonna add a little bit of dill. Now, you don't have to add dill to this recipe. It can be more of just a vinegar and sugar recipe but because we grow awesome dill and we've had this drying in the house, I'm gonna actually just use some of this and put it right in to our mixture here. Then I'm gonna put a lid on. I'm gonna shake this up really well. And we're just gonna let that all sit while we slice up the cucumbers. We want that sugar and the dill to, you know, we want the sugar to dissolve and we want the dill to rehydrate within the mixture while it's sitting. So we're gonna set that off to the side. Now we're gonna take our three cucumbers and we're gonna slice them. Uh, I like to use a mandolin for this. You can definitely do it by hand. I've done that plenty of times as well. I just like the mandolin because it does get the pieces evenly sliced. Now with this recipe, you can uh, do this several different ways. You can slice it on a mandolin like this. You can cut thicker slices. I've even done it where you would cut them into chunks. The reason that I like to do it on a mandolin where it's thinner slices, honestly, is because 
I'm impatient. By doing it this way, by tomorrow morning, this will be ready to eat. The thicker the slices, the longer it takes for the cucumber to soak up all of the brine and really get the flavor throughout it and the longer it'll take. And I'll be honest, that's just not for me. So uh, I'm gonna use the mandolin today. Now, there is a guard that comes with the mandolin so you don't cut your fingers. I'm not using that. If you feel safer using that, go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm gonna hold it kind of by the end and I'm gonna stop way before I get to the point where I can cut my fingers. So we're just gonna slide this through here. We're gonna slice these cucumbers up. And whatever slices don't end up in there, we'll give to the pigs. All right, I've sliced up the first two cucumbers and to be honest, I think these cucumbers were bigger than I thought. So before I do the third one, I'm gonna actually add these to the brine and see how full our jar is. All right, so I guess the first jar ended up only needing about one and a half cucumbers. Sometimes the cucumbers are bigger than you think. So we're gonna actually end up making two jars. So I end up making a second jar of brine. We're gonna add the second cucumber and a half to that jar. The brine recipe is exactly the same as the first jar. We are gonna add one more ingredient to these before we put them in the refrigerator. The last thing that we're gonna add is an onion. The onion just really seems to bring out the flavor of the cucumber and just really seems to give it an awesome flavor. So, we're going to just slice one small onion. It's not gonna be a very big onion, but we're gonna slice an onion. We're gonna split it between the two jars. All right, both of those jars are done. Now, because we cut these so nice and thin, like I said, these are only gonna take about 12 hours in the refrigerator before they're ready to eat, which is why I love this recipe because, like I said earlier, I'm impatient, and uh, that's just not one of the things that the Lord gave me <laughs> as a gift, is being patient. So, I'm gonna put these in the fridge. I'm gonna be able to have these tomorrow by lunchtime, and I'm excited about that. All right, so we're gonna put these in the refrigerator and then we're gonna move on to the last thing, which is how to save seeds from your cucumbers so that you can have a never ending supply of awesome cucumbers to grow every single year. Now, in order to save seeds from cucumbers, they need to be extremely ripe, which means you need to let them go way past their prime. You don't wanna pick a green cucumber like you would for one that you wanna eat. You wanna let it get pretty yellow, almost orange, and then you wanna bring it in the house and you wanna let it sit for at least a week before you harvest the seeds. So this one has been in the house for at least a week. Uh, you can see I have written on here that this is a Chicago pickling cucumber that we've let get extra big. Now, the thing with cucumbers is they will cross pollinate. This year we grew two types of cucumbers. We grew uh, one called the Chicago pickling cucumber and we also grew one called market more cucumbers. In order for cucumbers to not cross-pollinate, they need to be at least a half mile apart. Obviously, we didn't grow our two varieties a half mile apart, so chances are these seeds next year will be a combination of those two types. I don't really care. Both of these types are great cucumbers and I absolutely love them. So these are seeds that we will save for our own garden next year. We also sell plant starts in the spring at our local farmer's market. The seeds that we save today will not be used for that purpose. Uh, these will be for our own garden. The plants that we sell at the farmer's market will come from seeds that we purchase so that we know they're a true variety. But the ones that we grow in our own garden, again, if they're across, I don't really care. What I care is that we can save our own seeds and we can have plenty of good cucumbers in coming years. So. We're gonna take this cucumber, again, this is an overripe cucumber, and we're gonna start by just cutting this in half. And 
and you can see how many seeds are inside of a cucumber like this. This will be enough for a lot of gardens in future years. Now cucumber seeds, kind of like tomato seeds, are encapsulated in kind of a gelatinous kind of covering that you need to get off of the seeds. So what we're going to do is we're going to scoop all of these seeds out into a bowl. Now, once we have all of those seeds scooped out, which you can see there are, I mean, probably a hundred or more seeds in this bowl, we're going to add enough water to just kind of cover all of the seeds and add some extra liquid to the bowl. It doesn't need to be a lot of water, just enough to uh, cover those seeds. And we're actually going to let these ferment for about the next day or two days. It really depends on the temperature of your house. The warmer the temperature, the faster this process will go. The, the cooler the temperature, the slower it'll go. But we're going to, we're going to just basically leave these now in this bowl. About twice a day we're going to come and we're just going to stir them up. Over the next day you will see that this will start to ferment to the point where the seeds will sink to the bottom and everything else will kind of float to the top. You might even see a little bit of mold on top of the uh, water. That's perfectly normal and it might even smell a little bit bad, but that's okay. As soon as that happens and you can see that the seeds have separated from that gelatinous uh, coating that they have, that is when you want to drain all of that off and then you can let the seeds uh, on a paper towel or something to dry and then you'll have all of your seeds for your next garden. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to cover this with a paper towel with a rubber band around it because you do want air to be able to get to it but you don't want a lot of other stuff to be able to get in there so we're just going to cover this we want to set this in a location where it's not in direct sunlight if you have a cabinet or somewhere where it can go and stay kind of dark that's fine otherwise just as long as it's not right next to a window it should also be fine uh, we're going to set this off to the side and again we're going to stir this about every 12 hours until the seeds are separated from the coating so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put our seeds on top of the refrigerator. It's away from the windows. It stays pretty warm up there and it will help this process happen pretty quickly. Now you guys, I know there's a lot of questions about saving seeds, not just from cucumbers, from, but from all of the plants that you have throughout your garden. I want to show you a great resource that we have found. Several years ago, we actually raised seeds for Baker Creek Heirloom Seed Company. And one of the books that they recommended to us was this book right here called Seed to Seed. It is an amazing book. It basically walks you through every type of vegetable that you can think of growing in your garden. And it'll take you through not only growing those vegetables, but how to save the seeds as well. It talks about how far apart you need to plant. If you, want, if you don't want cross-pollination, it'll tell you just a ton of information. Uh, we have a link to this book in our Amazon shop if you want to take a look at it. But again, it's called Seed to Seed, and it is just an amazing resource to have. I suggest anybody who is going to save seeds from their own farm to have this book because um, we can't remember everything every year. Uh, for a lot of us, we only do this once a year. So to have something that you can flip through and find the information when you need it is a really invaluable resource. So there you go, you guys. Three things to do with cucumbers when you have way too many. You can make cucumber limeade, which is an awesome drink for the summertime. You can make some refrigerator pickles, which uh, not only are a great treat right now, but they will last quite a long time in the refrigerator. And you can save seeds so next year you can do it all over again. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're enjoying our channel, you enjoy the types of videos that we put out, I hope that you'll hit the subscribe button. I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up. And most of all, I hope that you will share this video on all of your social media. That's always the best way that you can help our channel. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.